Hello, today's Bible study comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. It's a long one, and it reads as follows. I must go on boasting, although there is nothing to be gained. I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know. But God knows. Was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things. Things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that. But I will not boast about myself, except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Amen. Um, Paul is continuing to talk about boasting, but remember Paul had enough problems in the last chapter about talking about himself, and it says, it tells you right there, it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. Um, problem was, um, Paul really didn't want to boast um, in the opening words, you know, when he starts this off, and Paul doesn't like talking about himself. There's no need, and as I stated earlier, and um, t uh, two days back, less than that, Paul really just wanted to talk about Jesus. Um, but the Corinthians kept having this worldly thought, these earthly thoughts, these thoughts about how things are supposed to be. And it made them think less of Paul because of his appearance and how we he was presented, and then, which Paul felt that led to them thinking little about Jesus. Um, and this is their perception. You know, they even if they couldn't perceive it truly, Paul knew that they were looking at appearance and not actual message and spiritual blessing. So he says, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. and. Paul knew that these so-called super apostles that were there, um, they were telling him how great they were and their experiences and everything that they had gone through. I remember Paul had told him about his suffering. But this time he says their experiences such as visions and revelations of the Lord. And now, mm, Paul said, I've been easy about this. Um, and remember, we were just talking about this in chapter 11. I've been easy about this. So now, you know what? He's going to boast on his own visions and revelations of the Lord. Now, remember, the difference here is that Paul's are true. And these visions and revelations, they are something that Paul is going to truly instruct them on, too. And he starts with numerous things, but if you look, he does understand visions and revelations. And what he says is, I know a man in Christ. It wasn't just any man, but he says, I know a man in Christ for 14 years ago. So when he says, I know a man in Christ, and, the, and when he's speaking, you notice he doesn't say, he doesn't put himself in the forefront. He's almost talking in like third person here. Um, but he says, I know a man in Christ. And Paul starts talking about what he went through. And he didn't say it was him himself. But um, he says, I know a man in Christ. So just understand that this man is in Christ. And it, 
He doesn't actually say if he was even speaking about somebody else. He just says, I know a man in Christ. So mm, there could be some issues where it is, Paul. It could be some where it isn't. But um, when you get a little further on, and we will, we'll open up that you can see that it's him that he's talking about. But right now, would you say he's talking about a person, a third person? He doesn't say who it is. But he know a person, a man in Christ. Um, and he is describing the experience, a spiritual experience. And when he talks, so he is talking as probably these uh, super apostles would be trying to do um, to impress the Corinthians. Um, but remember, Paul says a man in Christ. We have to remember that. And he was not actually glorifying himself as these uh, other apostles were. And when I say other, I'm talking about the super apostles were. Um, and Paul gets to this and watch as he speaks on this. Paul doesn't speak and talk on this in order to edify himself. He speaks on it to still give glory to the Lord. And he says, 14 years ago, um, um, that is telling you when it occurred, but I don't know what happened there. Um, but it, he, he does give us a time frame of at least when it started, 14 years ago. And he doesn't say anything else. He's pretty cool about this 14 years ago. Whether in the body... I do not know, or whether out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And all he's saying is, I don't know if I was in my body or out of my body when I had my vision. But the one that does know is God. And he knew that it was possible in either form. But he goes on and he says, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know we all want to say there's all these tears and all this, but Paul just says the third heaven. He doesn't tell us anything about there being a place of first heaven, second heaven, third, fourth, or fifth heaven. He just says third heaven. Um, but if you really think about it, he was probably saying something that they could relate to. Um, and, you know, even as we name the stratosphere and all those things, Paul might be naming the levels of where he was at in the sky. But he, he, he just says third heaven. Um, so this one, this is when we think of Paul. He was caught up to heaven where God lives. and. Paul is telling him about the experience that he had to this throne. And even though he speaks in the third person, like I said, later on, we'll see where it relates back to him. And he was caught up in the paradise. And that's just Paul calling the third heaven, just calling the third heaven, basically paradise. Um, so He heard it in inexpressible words, and we had spoken of this before a while back, which is not lawful for a man to utter when we spoke about um, tongues. And when Paul was describing this vision, Paul says, and he heard in inexpressible words, and the words were not lawful for a man to utter. And he only gives you a description of what he heard because, one, he told you they were inexpressible words and they were not lawful for a man to utter. So he's telling you what he heard, but it's not words that were expressible. And Paul 
is still making this all about the Lord. It's not about him. And if you notice, even when he brings it up, he takes you back 14 years. If if he was going to be bragging about it, he would have bragged about it a long time ago. If it was something to boast about that he was going to boast about, he had 14 years to boast about it because he takes us right back 14 years ago. And no need to do any of those other things, like I said, because it was not lawful for him to utter it. And the expressible words, which is it is not lawful for a man to utter, they weren't for us to know. It wasn't our time to gain that knowledge. It isn't our time. So Paul wasn't allowed to say it, understand it. And and he, he may have understood it, but I, I doubt if he did. But no matter what it was, if he did or didn't, because he does say and heard inexpressible words. So one thing it does tell us is he wasn't allowed to repeat it. So it goes on and says, of such a one, I will boast yet myself. I will not boast except in my infirmities. And Paul is saying this person that I talked about, that I'm talking about, um, he did have something to boast about. And then Paul says, but I can only boast about my weaknesses. And that's what he did in the last chapter. He boasts about his, his weaknesses. And he says, though I might desire to boast, I was I will not be a fool. And this is Paul's comparison to these super apostles. Um, they had no problem boasting. They they were that's how they attracted the Corinthians with their boastings about their visions. But they you know, and if they knew of Paul's vision or had the type of vision that Paul had, it wouldn't be a problem for him to boast about that. Um, they would do a whole lot of these things, but Paul says they would be a, be a fool. And Paul said, they may have boasted and gave you this information, but I will not be a fool. I won't be a fool. So there's no boasting for me. And Paul starts telling him about the experience about this, but don't dwell on it. And he says it there, but I forbear. I forbear because I don't want you to think that I'm a super apostle. And, and and if I go back up and look at your scripture, it says, where is he at? How was God in paradise and heard one of such boasts yet? For myself, I will not boast except my infirmities, my weakness. For he may desire it. I'm not a fool. For I will speak the truth, yes. But I refrain from boasting. And it doesn't say boasting, but he's saying, but I refrain because he's speaking to this boasting. And the reason why, lest... Anyone should think of me. First of all, we got to remember that part. They should think of me. The attention should not be on me. And he says, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. No, don't put any of the attention on me is what Paul is truly saying. So Paul is talking and he's giving them this information. And I know, and you know, that they didn't like Paul. They thought he was um, not the image of what they perceived and wanted him to be. But he said, "He, your job is the glory God, not me. And see, Paul's weakness showed God. And they had a problem with this. And Paul said, don't pay attention to me or really to the super apostles in their format, in their presentation. And don't think of me as one of those super apostles. Because it's not about me. 
So he never had to brag it, about it. And Paul knew that all of this, all of his trials, all of his suffering, all of his speech, all of his word, it was all about God. And if you notice, even in Paul's suffering, God was glorified. Paul was obedient to God and God delivered him. Paul was in danger and Paul delivered him. Paul was making sure that you knew that his message, that his actions, that everything he did was to glorify God. It was never about Paul. So in verse 7 it says, Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. And this vision was so much that, yeah, they could have lifted him up and called him all these things and said he is this and that. And he could have put it all on himself, gained all the glory, gained all the accolades, all the attention, all the favor because of his experience. Okay, he could have. And this would have been a pride thing. This would have been an arrogance and a conceited thing. And we know God doesn't work that way. And Paul does too. So Paul could be tempted by it, but he knew that that was not how it was supposed to be. He was not supposed to be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. That wasn't him. So he says, a thorn in, my, in the flesh was given to me. And that was to stop him from getting conceited, arrogant, and prideful. And it says it was, he says it was given. It was given to him. And he's, he's telling him, hey, the, the real thing about this vision is... Now, not to tell you about what glorifies me, but about this thorn in my flesh. Why do I have this thorn in my flesh to keep me in mind? And, and to keep me in mind of why did I have the thorn in my flesh? Because they, they knew who Paul was. They didn't like how his appearance was. They understood what they knew about Paul and his weakness to them, and the thorn in his flesh that Paul suffered from. This was obvious. And as, a, as he said, he kept this a secret from 14 years ago. But you could see this thorn. Now, the vision they couldn't see, they didn't know about. But the thorn, they knew about all the time. And Paul is teaching them big time here. And as they did, as we spoke, they didn't care for Paul because of that thorn. Uh-oh, uh-oh. But they didn't know about the vision. And when they saw all these flaws and weaknesses and stuff in Paul, Paul could have came out with this vision and stated this is the vision. But here he didn't because he said, what you really can see is this thorn in my flesh and why it is. And the thorn in his flesh, well, it was describing a big thorn in his flesh. This wasn't like a little thing. This was a big thing in his flesh. And as it says, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. The thorn was given, and it was given by God. But he says, now this is this is the part you got to look at. It says, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Uh-oh. A messenger of Satan to buffet me. It was, it was physically at Paul, if, if I could say it. It was knocking him out. It was hitting him. He was beaten black and blue. 
He was thrown over a wall. He was out to sea by, as it says, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. So, Paul was being hit by the devil in his movement. And the reason the Holy Spirit told him there would be danger at all, it was the devil. It was his thorn. Uh-oh. Paul knew this. And he says, guess what? I kept going. I keep going. So, Paul tells you, hey, a thorn in the flesh was given to me. Okay, the Lord gave it to him. But this thorn in the flesh was a messenger of Satan to buffet me. So he was always in this danger mode. Um, and if we pay attention, Paul is telling you, I've been doing this. And the only thing I can brag about is the fact that you can see. You can see this thorn in my side this thorn in my life, this thorn in my flesh. You can see it. I didn't brag about it. Um, and the other thing he's saying is, I have it. It was given to me. You can make it through this too. See, I, I can tell you about the infirmity that I have. And my weaknesses and all these things. But Paul said, I'm going to keep persevering. And when you think about Paul and what he wrote and having this thorn in his flesh, you can understand why he could teach so greatly because he was being punched and attacked with this thorn. And he said, I'm going to keep going. So Paul was showing you his faith and his perseverance. And he could be delivered from this thorn. He was. Amen.